Okay, so I'm going to draw the letter T in one point perspective. And if you remember, in one point perspective, we're going to see the front face of that plane that faces the viewer. So in a box, if I were to draw it small off to the side, you've got your first front face, which is that square. And then you have your horizon line, your vanishing point, just one of them, because one point perspective. And all of the planal changes go back to that one point. And then the corners correspond depending on the plane that they're a part of. So this top plane, you've got these two corners. If you're going to chop off one there, remember the horizontal lines are going to be parallel to the horizon. So that's parallel horizontally. And then all of the vertical lines are also vertical to or uh, parallel to each other. So that means that whenever you have another corner, you're going to be able to make a vertical line come straight down. Those are all going to be parallel to each other as well. So if I were to apply that to, let's say, a letter of the alphabet, so I'll just use the letter T because it's fairly simple. We don't have any like curves or anything crazy. So you always start off with your horizon line, start off with your one point. Remember the horizon line is eye level. So I'm going to draw this letter T down below the horizon line, which means effectively I am above the letter T. I'm going to be looking down. I'm going to see that top plane of the letter T. I'm going to draw the letter T off to the side just so that we can really get those uh, nice dramatic diagonals that go back to the vanishing point. The T doesn't need to be perfect. I don't need to create a nice typeface with this. So I'm just going to use my straight edge to draw a blocky letter T. And without being too particular about it, I'm going to try to make all of my lines and planal changes parallel to each other. All right, I'm going to erase overshoot. Okay, so this is my letter T. It's obviously not perfect. Um, this neck of the T is slightly shifted to the right, but that's okay. For the purposes of how I'm going to show you how to make this into one-point perspective, it'll work just fine. All right, so we want to give this some depth to this letter T. We see the front-facing plane, which is the actual letter T with all of its horizontal and vertical lines. All of the planal changes are going to go back to that one vanishing point. Boop, VP right there. All right, so that means all the corners of the edges, anywhere where you see a plane changing and deviating to another direction, that's where we are going to bring that back to the vanishing point. And I'm going to draw this as if the letter T were transparent which means you could see through it as if this letter T were made of glass. Bringing that back. So without discrimination, I am going to be bringing all of the corners, all of those plain old change corners back to the vanishing point. And there we go. A little off, but we're good. All right. So now we have our dimension to this letter T, we can now see the side planes receding back to the one vanishing point. But we want to chop off this T somewhere. We don't want it to continue on infinity. So I'm going to just choose one of these uh, angled lines, if you will. And that, remember, designates uh, like the top plane here, side planes here, etc. And I want my T to go as far back as here. So now remember, just like how I showed with that little review of the cube, that means that I can now take, where I want to chop this off right there, I can now take a parallel horizontal line and go straight across, and I know where to stop where it lines up with the corresponding corner of that same plane. So I'm chopping off the top plane right here, the top plane of the T. So that means this corner is going to correspond to this corner because this also is going to be this back edge or this right edge of this top plane. So I know to stop this line when it intersects that line. I'll demonstrate here. So from that point, remember I just chose that point. I just wanted that T to go as far back as there. And I'm going to drag that across all the way until this point right here where it intersects this line because this line is this corner and that where I wanted it to stop corresponds to this corner. So I now have my top plane of my T. Same thing with all of the planal changes. I'm now going to bring this line straight down. Remember, all of the horizontal and vertical lines are going to be parallel to each other in one point perspective. And I know where to stop 
because this corner correlates to this corner and this directly down right there, this is that line that's gonna help me stop this back edge right there. So now we have our right plane of the top part of the T. All right, and because this T, how I'm drawing it is going to be uh, transparent. So that means that this corner dot I'm gonna go straight across to right there. I know it's kind of running into some of this, but that's okay. Now this is supposed to be right above that one, and I know it's not right now, and that's just some of the things that can happen. Um, things aren't gonna be perfect, but in theory, they're gonna line up. So I have this front rectangle, if you will, and then this back rectangle. I'm gonna redraw some of these lines so you can see that a little bit better. That is the edge right there. Some of the inconsistencies can happen if you don't perfectly line up some of the diagonal lines to the vanishing point. Um, there can be a couple other reasons. And some of these lines seem to sometimes run into each other and that's okay. So just kind of average the two and it's about there. So I'm gonna bold in the outside edges just so you can start visualizing what this is. Okay, so we've got this, we've got this, okay. Now, for those of you thinking ahead, if this T were opaque, we wouldn't be able to see this back edge right there. But I drew it anyways, so that, let's see, I think part of my problem was this here. I don't think I was drawing my lines parallel. There we go. All right, so what we need to do is we need to chop off how far back this is going to go. We've got like the top of the T and then the neck of the T. So how far back does this go? This intersection right here is going to tell us where to draw that line straight down because this is where this back plane of the T meets up with the neck of the T back there. So I'm going to draw a vertical line going straight down from there, boop, like that. And certainly that corresponds with a line already drawn, which is this guy right here to this corner, which also means that horizontally, that would effectively be that back edge right there of the T. And that would line up straight up with this line as well that we've already drawn. So that would be how we would draw our T. And if this T were to be opaque, I will bold in the lines that we would see if we can't see through this T. That one's already pulled in. This guy. And we've got this guy. We've got this guy. And also to help with understanding, I've got my needed eraser here. Let me erase. Some of the lines we would not see. My white vinyl eraser is going to erase better. Okay. So again, I took the time to draw some of those lines back there purely so that I could find intersections so that I could know where to stop this bottom part of the T. So this is a side plane, so that comes up. So all of this stuff, if this T were opaque, we would not be able to see this either right there. So you do have to visualize a little bit how this would look can probably see it now. This line also we can't see. Okay. Quick boldening. I'm not using my straight edge for this. So again, doing all these lines back here helped me just uh, discern that this line straight down there is going to be how far back this T needs to be cut off down there. And that is our one point perspective T. Put some nice little shading down there. Ta-da!